to the next page. Now we will begin part A with the first conversation. Number one. I'm taking six courses this semester. Maybe you should cut down next term. What does the woman suggest the man do? Number two. Joyce, did you borrow my ruler? No, Bill did. What happened to the ruler? Number three. I think it'll be hard for me to write that paper because I'm so tired. Why don't you do it later on in the day, after you've rested? What does the man suggest the woman do? Number four. I'm looking for a nice, quiet place to spend two weeks. Can you help me? We have several brochures here that you can take home to look at. What does the woman mean? Number five. The weather's been so hot and humid this week. Hasn't it, though? What does the man mean? Number six. I thought we might try that new pizza place tonight. Wouldn't you prefer somewhere a little more elegant? What does the woman imply? Number seven. I was thinking about going to the opening performance of the new play Friday night. You'd better do more than think about it if you're serious. There might not be any tickets left by then. What does the man suggest the woman do? Number eight. Did you know it's almost five? Five? It can't be. What does the man mean? Number nine. The cafeteria is serving cheese sandwiches for lunch today. I'm glad we made plans to go somewhere else. What does the man imply? Number ten. Your new table is gorgeous. It must have been expensive. A little, I guess. What does the man say about the table? Number 11. The graduation luncheon has been set for the last Thursday of the semester. Oh, really? I'll have to change it on my calendar. What had the man assumed about the graduation luncheon? Number 12. I need this prescription filled as soon as possible. Do you want that in tablet or liquid? What does the woman ask? Number 13. How could I be so absent-minded? I left my wallet at home again. It just so happens I have twenty dollars I don't need until tonight. What does the woman mean? Number 
number 14. I wish you'd try harder to be on time. There's no need for you to talk to me like that. What can be inferred about the man? Number 15. What's going on at the theater? There's not usually a crowd like that on weeknights, especially for a foreign film. There's a special promotion going on. Two people get in for the price of one. What does the man mean? Number 16. Hi, Barbara. How are things? Have you gotten used to campus life yet? I guess I have, but you are the first person I've run into all day who knows my name. What can be inferred from the conversation? Number 17. I'm really sorry I had to cancel our plans again. I hope you're not too upset. At first I was angry, but actually you did me a favor. I took care of a lot of work that had been backing up. What does the man imply? Number 18. Do you know if it's supposed to be warm enough on Wednesday to have our party outside, in the backyard? I heard it'll be warm, but that it's likely to rain most of the day. What will probably happen to the party? Number 19. I'm sorry, Paul, but I can't go with you to the basketball game. I really have to study for a math test. You know all that stuff. You'll pass with flying colors. What does the man imply the woman should do? Number 20. I like the color and style of this suit but the paths should be shortened a bit. We can have it done here for you at no extra charge. What does the woman suggest the man do? Go on to the next page. Number 21. I can't believe you got a job in a candy factory. What a great way to spend the summer. To be honest, it's not all it's cracked up to be. I'm going to spend the next few months just sorting candies by color and size. What will the woman be doing at her job? Number 22. Can I borrow some cough drops from you? I don't feel up to going to the drugstore. You've been under the weather all week. You ought to go to the health center just to be sure it's not serious. What does the woman mean? Number 23. Those kitchen cabinets look great. Did you put them in yourself? I took the easy way out and got a carpenter to do it. What does the man mean? Number 24. By now, your sister must have decided where she wants to go to college. She's been too busy with soccer to even open a catalog. What does the man say about his sister? Number 25. 
I've asked Jane if we could get a ride with her to the craft fair. So you can go after all. What had the woman assumed about the man? Number 26. Oh, by the way, your brother called again while you were out. This is ridiculous. We've been missing each other for days. What does the woman mean? Number 27. What I wouldn't give for a hot cup of coffee right now. Would you settle for some lukewarm cocoa left over from lunch? I have enough for two. What does the man offer to do? Number 28. Hmm, I see the space is marked reserved. Can you get a ticket for parking here? Just for a few minutes? Sure can. I did once and had to pay a huge fine. What does the woman imply? Number 29. I've never applied for a driver's license before. Do you just go into an office and take a short test? If only it were that simple. What does the woman mean? Number 30. Do you want to come with me to hear a lecture over in the art building? I've got a class right now, but I'm headed that way. What will the woman probably do? Go on to the next page. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a talk in a photographer's studio. Good morning. Can I help you? Can I get a passport picture taken here? Yes, we can take it right now. How long till it's developed? Just a few minutes. We have a special instant camera for passport pictures. Great. Let's do it. Fine. Why don't you have a seat over here in front of the screen? Um, you might want to pull your hair back. I've heard that passport agencies sometimes reject applications because the picture doesn't show enough of a person's face. That wouldn't be any good. Would it help if I tucked my hair behind my ears? Perfect. Oh, what about my glasses? I usually take them off when I'm getting my picture taken. Now, if you plan on wearing them when you use your passport, you should probably just leave them on. Oh, I always wear them. Well, then you're okay. Now, if you'd sit still a moment and smile... I think we have it. Thanks. I hope it doesn't take too long to get the application processed. I'm scheduled to leave at the end of next month. Maybe you could hand-deliver your application to a passport agency instead of mailing it. That would probably save you a few days. Good suggestion. I think there's one right near the campus. Number 31. Why does the woman go to see the man? Number 32. According to the man, why might a passport agency reject an application? Number 33. Why should the woman keep her glasses on for the picture? Number 34.
number 34. What does the woman imply about her new passport? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to two students discussing a trip they took to a science museum. I must admit that when Dr. Carver mentioned that we had to visit the science museum, I sure wasn't looking forward to it. I know what you mean. I remember science museums as boring places filled with stuffed birds and glass display cases of rocks. Yeah, I definitely like these hands-on exhibits better. It's really a great way to understand some of the concepts we're learning in class. They stick in your mind when you can see them in action and work with them. Uh-huh. Like that section where you try to figure out who committed the murder by analyzing evidence the way a police lab would? Right. Did you try the experiment where you compare the perfumes of all the suspects to the perfume found at the scene of the crime? The one where you smelled what was in a bottle and then answered questions about the smell on a computer? Yeah. It was interesting to see the chart of all the different smells and how you classify them, and then to see the graphs of the different perfumes according to their chemical composition. That was really amazing. I never understood how that chemical separation technique worked when Dr. Carver talked about it in class. But from the analysis we did, I can see how useful it can be to separate out the different chemicals. There was so much more that I wanted to see and to try out. Yeah, I'm looking forward to going back. Number 35. What are the speakers mainly discussing? Number 36. Why were the speakers unhappy about the required museum visit at first? Number 37. What do the speakers say about hands-on exhibits in museums? Number 38. What do the speakers plan to do in the future? This is the end of Part B. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to a tour guide at a wildlife park in central Illinois. Thank you for choosing to spend a day with us here at Prairie Animal Park. Before you set off to see the animals, let me explain a little bit about the park. Prairie Animal Park is a nonprofit organization and gets no government money. The money from your admission ticket goes entirely to caring for the park and its animals. Most of the people who work here are volunteers. The park covers 2,400 acres. It was created by a group of people interested in restoring some of the Illinois prairie to its original condition. All the animals here were once native to the area. It surprises many folks to learn that buffalo, bald eagles, bears, and even mountain lions once called Illinois home because you don't see them in the wild anymore. The animals here are kept in areas closely resembling their natural setting. You'll notice in front of us the large open field with the stream. Although I don't see any there at the moment, that's where the buffalo roam. The herd is probably grazing at the far end right now. Beyond the stream, there's a large wooded area with fenced-in trails for you to walk along. As you walk, you may see families of foxes, deer, and even bears. But remember, this isn't a zoo with caged animals. These animals are doing what they do in the wild, searching for food, hiding, playing, whatever. So you may have to look long and hard to get a good view of them. Number 39. What is the main purpose of the talk? Number 40. What do all of the animals in the park have in common? Number 
41. Where are the animals kept? Number 42. What does the speaker imply about seeing the animals? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to part of a lecture in a college music class. Okay, that about does it for today. We're going to spend the next few classes on a different kind of music. We'll examine the development of jazz from its beginnings right on up to the latest in jazz music. We'll look at jazz as the most successful music indigenous to the United States, born in New Orleans and raised in Chicago and New York. We'll begin with the African roots of the music and how African rhythms blended with Western music to create an entirely new form. Then we'll follow jazz into its heyday, the 1920s, which was known as the Jazz Age. It was in this era that the blues were born. The 1930s saw the evolution of swing jazz music played by the big bands like that of Tommy Dorsey. If there's any generalization that can be made about jazz, it's that the music is always changing, evolving, from the bebop of the 40s to the cool jazz of the 50s and on into the experimental 60s. The 70s saw jazz brought into the electronic age by artists like Herbie Hancock. We'll end up listening to some examples of the newest transformation of jazz, Afropop, and the Latin beats that have brought new international flair to this music born in the United States. Be sure to read chapters 13 and 14 of your text. They'll get you started. If there are any jazz devotees among you, feel free to bring in your favorite tapes or CDs to share with the class. Reading Rosny's latest release would be great if anyone has it. Number 43. What is the speaker's main purpose? Number 44. What will probably be the subject of the next lecture? Number 45. What are some students asked to bring to class? Number 46. What does the speaker emphasize about jazz music? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to a talk being given in a university library. Thanks to the generosity of the Alumni Fund, we have been able to upgrade our facility and make it much easier for students and faculty to use our resources. Let me point out our new computers and what they can do. Of course, you've noticed the old card catalogs are gone. We in the reference department spent much of the summer making the switch to an online catalog. Using the computer, you can search our files by author, title, subject, or keyword. For example, if you wanted to know what books we have that deal with sharks, you type in S for subject and sharks, and the computer would take you to the listing of books you need. You can access individual works by title as well. The computer gives you all the information that was in the old card catalog, plus it can tell you the status of a book, checked in or out, when it's due back, and so on. We've also purchased a few database files on CD-ROM. Here we have the Reader's Guide to Periodical Literature. This is where you can find references for articles in many general interest magazines. Let's say you were researching the use of pesticides in farming. You would request articles that matched pesticides and agriculture. The database searches the topics and narrows down the references to articles that discuss both topics. Most of our databases work in a similar manner. We know everyone is going to find these new computers a real improvement in the services we offer. I can't think of a more significant contribution that the Alumni Fund could have made to our school. Number 47. Who is giving the talk? Number 
48. What part did the alumni play in getting the new library equipment? Number 49. What new information is available on the computerized system that was not available in the card catalog? Number 50. What does the speaker think of the new equipment?